Remy's Castle is a powerful four operator FM synthesizer under full voltage control. Unlike many FM synthesizers, the modulation scheme is entirely up to the user and the controls are totally hands on. This layered simplicity allows for endless configurations and the creation of a vast palette of sounds. In this video, we will take a look at some patches and tips for getting the most out of a Kemi's castle. The four operators can be configured six different ways with the algorithm selector. The first two are two voice modes that allocate two operators to each oscillator. In other words, we can design two different timbres, one for oscillator A and one for B. Currently, oscillator A is an FM chord voice and oscillator B is a one operator bass line. Keep in mind that the chord option is only available on oscillator A. Here is another bass and chords patch. This time, oscillator B is a single operator square wave running directly through the mum mate, patched like a traditional subtractive synth voice. Oscillator A is again set up for two operator FM chords. We are sequencing the pitch with the multiply CV inputs rather than one volt per octave. Since the multiply controls are stepped, the sequences are locked into mathematical values like a quantizer. Oscillator B can have two independently patched operators with this method. The chords are really shaped by timbre. Try changing waves and FM amount for tonal shifts. Naturally, Pamela's new workout pairs nicely with the castle. Here, four triangular wave LFOs are modulating each operator level and four stepped random signals are changing their waves. Everything is clocked and the four LFOs are set two times slower to one another. The squid sample is working as a stereo delay on the mix of the two droning oscillators. Thank you. 
Changing algorithms presents all sorts of new ideas, especially with a drone patch. This patch is the same, except the random voltages are updating the positions of the pitch multiply control on each channel. The castle is best explored with loads of modulation. Here we have added a cycling envelope to change wave shapes. Instead of smooth LFOs, Pamela is primarily generating gates that are then patch to CV inputs. Gates or square wave LFOs essentially jump between two positions on the knob with the gate low position set by the parameter knob and the gate high position set by the CV input attenuator. Using gates at the CV inputs creates very rhythmic tombal shifts and can sound percussive and rhythmic, especially with certain algorithms. A sidechain compression like effect is created using a rising saw wave from Pam. It adds a nice pull and push to the rhythm. To replicate more of an Akemi's Tycho or Dinky's Tycho vibe, we can patch envelopes to the 1 volt per octave inputs. Combine this with the pitch sweeps, envelopes or gates to operator levels to create complex and fast percussive voices. The 
feedback level is great for introducing noise to the voice and may be CV controlled for each oscillator. super saw like oscillator can easily be made by combining both oscillators, mixing and manually detuning and then turning the chord knob on one of the detuned settings for a total of six detuned oscillators. For the classic super saw sound it is best to use one operator set directly to a saw on the wave selector. Here is a square wave. A unique, almost vocal quality can emerge with less harmonic wave selections, especially mixed into a resonant filter. Quadrature LFOs pair well with the castle and make for foolproof timbral morphing. Similar to our earlier patch, we are adding sample and hold to the waves to combine stepped timbral changes with morphing modulation between operators. Using the two oscillators as a stereo pair expands the reach of a simple drone patch and adds to the perceived movement.
Because frequency modulation between two wave shapes can sound so different, this patch continues to produce a wide range of sounds as the four waves are updated to totally random positions with each clock pulse. Here is another patch using gates to modulate parameters. This time we will slowly build it up and listen to how a patch like this forms. forget the level controls on the output operators act like digital VCAs. Here an envelope is added to control volume. Notice how a sequence emerges once several polyrhythmic gates are connected. can bring dynamics to a steady repeating patch like this. Even just adding one is enough for some more natural sounding motion.
modulation sources are just as important as the destinations. Thankfully, Pamela's new workout lets us produce all sorts of synced modulation, which makes it easy to build up a layered patch like this. We can add a little rhythmic click by sending the trigger out of Quaid into the volt per octave input of oscillator A. For a short moment the oscillator jumps to a very high pitch which ends up sounding like a percussive element due to the short trigger length. Send in smooth CV to the wave or multiplier controls creates a unique climbing effect due to the steps changes across the parameter. In this patch, the Pamela's new workout is producing eight triangle LFOs, each set 12% out of phase from one another. Here, four of the LFOs have been moved from wave to the multiplier CV inputs. Kemi's Castle is a versatile synthesizer with a hands-on musical approach that provides continual inspiration. These patches are primarily starting points to build off of and expand. Let us know about your favourite way to patch the castle in the comments. Thank you for watching.